Hello everybody, I'm joined by RF Fozzy, or most of you know him as just Fozzy because it's easier to type than finding the underscore. Um, he's eating his breakfast. What are you eating for your breakfast, Fozzy? I am eating uh, porridge with raspberries. Oh, um, lovely. Hello, everybody. Yeah, and a he nice cup of tea. As well. That's okay. fine. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Well, I'll, I'll probably switch between them as we go along. So, um, so we're here today to do a little bit of a, a chat. So I'll put this probably on our YouTube channel and uh, on the podcast as well, um, if that works out okay. Um, and we're, we're here to have a little chat about orienteering because um, for a little while now, Fozzie has been saying, um, shall I do you a piece on orienteering? Um, we keep on going, yes, let's do it. And then we haven't done it for ages. So, so now we're finally doing it, hooray. So um, orienteering then, um, my basic understanding is um, there's a bunch of things that you've got to go and find your way to in order or not in order and the person who does it the best is the winner is that is that a, a, a good enough summary yeah it's not bad um we're done here right bye. yeah that's it <laughs> we, we, we're, we're done that's all you need to say um so yeah so essentially it's you it's it's a time trial yeah so um uh, and you get given a map and the idea is that you go off and you have to find, as you say, whatever it is you're looking for. Um, most of the time, it's in the shortest period of time. So the fastest person wins. So a bit like yeah. a race. So, um, uh, the t so there are generally, talk about other sports. I'm going to talk mainly about running orienteering because that's what most people do. Right. Oh, okay. Are, I'll, I'll say there are other there are other versions. So there's mountain bike orienteering. So I know there are a lot of cyclists on the site. There are. It's not so big in the UK, but it's definitely very big on the continent in places. Um, and there is a British mountain bike orienteering association. Um, please, please tell me there's a rollerblading version as well. There might be actually. I'm uh, as stupid as it sounds. There might be. It, it would be it, bearing in mind that orienteering's a niche sport. Right. It might, is, it's it's going to be a niche sport of a niche sport. A niche within a niche. Excellent. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah. So there's so there's mountain biking. There's a skiing version. Uh, I don't think there's a swimming version yet. Uh, although I you, you could probably set something up. I've yeah. seen a canoe version. Yeah, uh, but what most people do, uh, uh, there's also sort of a Paralympic type version, which is based more on the technical side of things. Uh, that's called Trailo. Don't ask me why it's called Trailo because I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so there are various disciplines, but uh, the main one that most people do is foot orienteering or running. Yeah. Uh, so you. You turn up to an event, and, and I think yeah. most of the people who are watching will know what it's like to turn up to a 10K or a half marathon. You turn up, you get your number, you pin it to yourself, someone shouts go, and you all run off in exactly the same direction. So how does the start of an orienteering thing differ? Yeah, so that's, that's what's a bit different with orienteering. So there are two main ways of doing it. So there are some events that are a bit like that. That's called a score event. So um, in that sort of event, you would get a map. You get given the map at the start as you're starting. Depending on how big the event is, is to how strict they allow people to have a look at the map beforehand. So a little local event, you might, if you, it's your first event and it's a local event, go and say and they'll talk you through the map. That's the first thing to say. Um, okay. But yeah, so there's a sc the score events are you say you might run for an hour and you have to see how many controls you can find in that whole hour um, right. or as, as much as you can. Generally, they have penalties. So if you come back late, um, you get deducted some points. So a lot of runners, we get a lot of runners at my club, which is Arian Tears, which is Leeds and Bradford and bits of the Dales. 
uh, we run a score league in the winter and that's really popular with runners because everybody starts at the same time. You all more or less finish at the same time and then you go to the pub. So that works quite well. Sounds um, like a good, good way of ending things up. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's not what most orienteering events sort of, or big orienteering events are like. Um, they tend to be what we call linear events or line events. And that's what more you'll perhaps people think of where you have to go from the start of the course to number one, to number two, number three, and they'll be drawn on the map. And you have to find those in the terrain, wherever that happens to be. Yeah. Um, and the thing is to remember, it's not a treasure hunt. So the, generally the control points shouldn't be difficult to find, especially yeah. for experienced orienteers. Um, it's more about how you interpret the map and how you run. Uh, so it's your choice of route between points rather than rooting around in the bushes going, I've well, found it, everyone. It's a bit, it's a, well, it's a little bit of both. It depends on the planner. So the two main principles of, this is getting a bit technical, but the two main principles of orienteering when you're planning are you've got fine navigation. So that might be saying you've got three spurs on the end of a hill or something and you've got to navigate to the right one or you've got to right, navigate to the right depression or whatever it happens to be. And that's what you call fine navigation. Or it might be a longer leg where you can say, go over a hill or go round a hill. And it's your ch route choice. And so the going over the hill might be shorter, but it's got more climbing. Yeah. Going round might be a longer path, but it's much longer. And therefore it might be easier running, but it might be more tricky at the end or something like that those sorts of things so that those are the general choices the reason a lot of people like scores is it doesn't have so much of that it's more find the control move on to the next one and if you can't find the control it doesn't matter so Whereas in a line event, you've got to find the control yeah so if in a line event if you can't find number one or number two you just have to go home or hope that you can follow someone or uh, beg yeah. for help that kind of thing yeah, uh, and uh, there are some, including my own, there are some extremely interesting times where people can't find controls and go around in circles. Yeah. My own special one was where I was, I was at this, there's a big event that they hold in Scotland at the Scottish Six Days, and I went round and round and round and round on the hillside of probably no more than about 100 metres by 100 metres, something in that square so not very big i could see it all and i went looking for this control and could i find it nope and i went round and round and round, and round in circles for an hour um turns out oh. i was looking in the wrong place but i was certain i was looking in the right place um so it was my mistake um uh, but yes it does happen that if you uh, Occasionally, even to, well, I'm not, and I wouldn't say I'm a good orienteer, but good orienteers make big mistakes sometimes. It's one of those, it's that's what it's a bit frustrating sometimes about that. Yeah. So it's technical as well as I suppose if you're, if you're really sure that you've read the map right, then nothing's going to convince you otherwise. And so you're determined to find whatever it is that you're looking for. So, so can I ask some newbie questions then? So, yeah. um, so let's say the linear event. So, mm -hmm. Do you all start off at the same time or is it staggered? No, so it's a staggered time. Right. Okay. So um, because it's a time trial, um, you um, start roughly, well, if the bigger, it depends on the event, but most events, it's a minute gap between. So so if you right. were running an event, the same, the same event as I was, you might go off, say, at quarter past 10, and I might go off at 16 minutes past 10. And the idea of that minute is it spreads people out. So you're not just following because of course the faster runners, if they're not very good navigators, could then just follow somebody. Um, yeah. That's not to say following doesn't happen. <laughs> no, does. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it would do really. If you, if you are lost and you, you see someone who looks like they know what they're doing, you're going to, you're going to go, all right, well, I'll, I'll follow that. But, um, the tricky, but yeah, the tricky part with that is, of course, because because everybody's doing 
and this is this is the nice part about Orient 2 because everybody's sort of starting at the same time you're not necessarily doing the same course so on the same event at an event so it would be like if you go to a running race and you've got an event and you might say well there's going to be a 5k 10k half marathon marathon okay oh, yeah and it's like the way that orienteering events because people are staggered it would be like setting people off in individual waves if you if you like and you but you go off and run your own course so if you were running the marathon you wouldn't want to follow the person running the 5k no okay yeah same, i get it the same thing happens at orienteering events um so there are it varies again on which event you go to, but um, we tend to, a lot of events, they use this rather strange system of calling courses by colors. So you go from white, yellow, orange, which is sort of, well, white and yellow are children's courses, orange is a beginner's course, and then there's a light green, which is slightly more tricky. And then there's a series of adult courses called green, blue, brown, black. Yeah. I, I, and and, I, and they not, get longer and more physically difficult, but they should be as hard as each other. So you get older runners running sort of a green, and that might be short, that might be three or four miles, and the longer courses might be seven or eight miles. Yeah. Uh, something like that. So, so you, yeah, so there's lots of people running around in lots of different directions is a typical orienteering event which, <laughs> is, which is why it's quite fun i suppose the color scheme although i've never really been skiing it's similar to the they have color schemes for the different uh, hills don't they and how difficult yeah. the, the slopes are so i guess it's, there's precedent for it elsewhere but so i'm arriving at my first checkpoint or uh, control is that the official term Mm -hmm. um, so, um, the, the way you described it, I'm not sure whether there's a, a guy sitting on a deck chair with a flat cap and a high vis, or whether there's like a, a tiny little thing nailed to a tree somewhere that you've got to write down a number from, or what, what should I expect? So, at most sort of organised events, so you, you go... Uh, I'll talk a bit about how you find where these things are, but generally these events are put on by local clubs a bit like running events um, you will find that there will be some form of stake and on that stake there will generally be a big well I say big a 60 centimeter square what we call a orienteering kite uh, and that has it's basically it's a two triangles it's an orange and a white triangle um, in a square if you see what I mean um, and that signifies that you're in the right place um, and they generally so the rules say this is where i get technical again the rules say you should see what you the feature in the terrain that you're looking for so if it's on a hill you should see the hill first and then see the flag that doesn't always happen you sometimes see the the, the flag first so yes yeah, so i should say control flag kite can all mean the same thing um, the kite right. is the actual uh, thing, and the Americans call them different things to we to what we call them. Everybody else in the world calls them one thing. The Americans call them something else. Well, so, I, I guess so. I guess they do. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you, you'll get to the point. So you've run along. It might be so you've run along the path, and then you say, right, it's about to go right into the woods here, and it's in this gully. Um, and at the point on the map where it says the control is there should be a physical marker that says you're in the right place and then at the bigger events we now have electronic timing so you run around with a little rfid chip and that records your time so you the way that works is you most events you there's a box at the start you put the rfid chip in the box one to number one put the rfid chip in the box there run to number two so you get a time for how long it's taking you to do each leg along the course so it's like um timing map technology yeah it's yeah. exactly the same as that it's just obviously it's easier to stick it in on a little box yeah and now going to things like the the they're bringing in contactless things and bigger events are now all of these sorts of um 
innovations that have been around in other events for a while uh, are now coming into orienteering and yeah. modernizing it a little bit. So, with um, everything going on with um, COVID and and mass events struggling to find ways to allow people to have some sort of challenge, but without being close together, it sounds like orienteering could be um, a way of of allowing people to, to have that challenge so uh, have you seen any upsurge or uh, excitement within the community about the prospect so, well yeah so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this now because cool. if you're not if you're not doing events it's there's a good chance that orienteering events are going to be back on within another month or so um, because as soon as the government allows us to do events say where you can have 10 or 20 people yeah, um, that's perfect for most orienteering events because, as we've already said, your your distance as you start, so or it's just congregation around the start and finish and things like that. So, yeah. um, most orienteering clubs have actually already started. Um, we've got there's a, an app which they've somebody in Australia has developed. It's called Map Run F. Don't ask me why it's F. That's <laughs> one of those things. It's an Australian um, thing, I expect. It's an Australian thing. Um, and a lot of clubs are putting event like virtual events on using that. So that uses the GPS on your phone to track and it pings when you get to so instead of they're not putting kites out in the terrain, but it when you get to it, your phone should ping and say, You've got to control point one, you've got to yeah. control point two, etc. Um, so I've definitely I, I seen tried one of these last night um for the first time. And it unfortunately crashed my phone. Um, oh dear. But other people have said that might be my phone. Other people have said um, it works quite well. Um, um, so yeah, um, that's so that's going on now. So go away, find a club, find your local club, and have a go. Basically, <laughs> excellent. We've seen um, a lot of the fetch games um, that involve having to find your way to places like um, Fetch Point and Who Squares Wins and Conquer Size, they've all seen a, a lot of interest as well. So there's def people definitely get the idea of um, having to navigate and explore and, and find their way to places. Um, so I, I really hope that orienteering can be part of the, the new revolution of, of running, really. That's, it sounds pretty good. So yeah. Um, well, it, we we orienteering as a sport is um, I won't say desperate, but it's very keen to have new new people come along because along with a lot several other sports in this country, it's got an aging demographic. So we have a lot of fifty, sixty year olds taking part. Um, a lot of men as well so it's, it's quite skewed uh, so we as a sport we definitely need well anybody literally, <laughs> literally everyone <laughs> um, but um, there's a I know there's a lot of junior development work but one of the things that I'm keen to do is encourage particularly younger adults to come along um, and have a go and you, you can I had never done this. I think I started in 2011, the end, back end of 2011. So I've only been doing it nearly nine years. And I came into it as a, as a, well, not even as a runner. I'd only been running for three years when I picked it up, something to do. Um, so yeah, so you can come into it as an adult having never done it before. Uh, and I've gone on to do British Championships and JKs. That's the, the big event that we hold in this country and all, all these sorts of things. And it, all right, I might not be winning things, but occasionally I'm competitive. Um, yeah. And because it's all age classes, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. You will always be with it, comparing yourself to um, like-minded, that like like for like if you like so you, yeah. you you um and the other thing i will say that, although this one doesn't affect me <laughs> is it's good for families because um 
unlike a running race where if you take the kids along so you might go to wherever it is and you're both running uh you're both off running at the same time with orienteering you can stagger it so one of you can run look after the kids uh, or even better they can run their course and then <laughs> so you, you can stagger things uh, and they're, they're literally courses for all ages so it doesn't matter how old you are um we've got i think there's an m90 class that's just come in so it's uh, a 90 plus uh, at the British Championships, I think that's right. Um, I know there's definitely 85 pluses taking part, so uh, it yeah. spans right it's, from it's two. Only a matter to, of time. Yeah, two to 92 <laughs> is the current yeah. age of this country. So uh, literally everybody, come along and have a go. So excellent. Well, um, I'm I'm definitely keen on uh, having a, a go of it myself when when things open up again. Um, and I know you, you were talking about like um, competing against other people, but it just sounds like a bit of fun as well. I mean, you can, it sounds like you can just go and do it for the challenge of doing it, just like you can go and run a, a 10K just to say that you've done it. Um, and yeah. if um, you get an, an inventive course where someone has put lots of uh, interesting things in to encourage you to get lost, then the, the coming out the, at the far end with a smile on your face sounds like it's a, a, a definitely an achievement yeah so uh, I, I i actually asked one of my friends what um one of the uh one of the things that he recommended and why he likes doing it um and one of the things is actually just what you said it, it's um it's a good change from a run yeah so it's something a bit different because yeah, you you are having to use your brain at the same time as you using your legs. So those runs where you're doing your maths to work out how much mileage you've got left or whatever, instead you can use that to work out, well, how do I find the next control? Yeah, triangulating. And yeah, it's uh, this thing. And it does, it, it does take the mind off the efforts at the time. So uh, our, the fastest runners are... GB athletes, but it varies again. Uh, but so you can treat it a bit as however you want to treat it. So, yeah, uh, quite often I just treat it as a training run in the woods, in a nice spot of the woods where I may never have been before. Uh, and it's something, it gets me out the door and something a bit different to what I would do normally. So, yeah, which is, that's how I came in. <laughs> that's how I did it in the first place. I just had a spare Wednesday and went, oh, that looks interesting. It's a yeah. big difference. And then you get to go to the pub at the end. So it's a, yes. it's a win all around. Well, not at the moment, obviously, but yeah. No, you get to go and look at the pub. You can go and look at the pub. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so um, for the, for the uh, podcast and everything, um, let's um, make sure that we get some links. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll, if you send me a bunch of links, I'll put them on our podcast thread and um, if you're happy for me to upload this video to youtube i'll make sure there are some links in there as well yeah um and um i'll happily share it with with everybody on fetch um, yeah so i was just going to say so the best way if you want to go and do an event there are a number of ways of doing this the british orienteering website uh which I'll put in the links is really good and that allow most events and things are put on by clubs. So you need to find it's um slightly different to running in the fact that the the clubs are geographical. So you probably only have one or maybe two clubs in your little patch. So um in Leeds we've just got Aryan Tears. Um but up the road in Harrogate there's another club there and there's a club in York. And then yeah. there's a club based around Wakefield. So you need to find whichever local club it is that you or clubs that you're close to. Um, and that then goes through them to find events. So the, the British Orienteering website is the best place to find what your club is. It's a bit tricky to navigate uh, to start with. So I'll put a link to where actually the, the events are as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, definitely the club websites are a bit easier so i'd go and find that um, yeah and the apps sound good as well 
if yeah, someone gets I'll try. This, um, Sorry? If someone gets gets one of the apps, do they? Well, is there a likelihood that there will be courses near them, or does it just depend on whether there's a club that's created one near them or something? So, as I understand it, most clubs at the minute are creating events, so there should be something near you, and all. Well, I'm saying it. I, I, most clubs seem to be putting events on through the app. Um, and as I understand it, the once it's created, it stays there. So if somebody's already put one on and it was on last week, that doesn't mean you can't go and do it. It just means you might not appear in a set of results, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so those events should stay there. There's also a lot of clubs have what they call permanent orienteering courses. And again, find those through the, the clubs and through the British Orienteering website. Um, and they are places where generally it's a it's a council owned wood or it's an open wood um, and there will be some kind of post in the ground rather than an orienteering flag there'll be a post that's permanently there and they're quite good for training these things that's what the, what the original go but you can just go turn up so if you're really unsure about going to a major event you can go to one of these permanent orienteering courses take the map along and go okay they say there should be one at this path junction. I'm going to go along, and I should hopefully, if the clubs maintained it, there should be a pay, post or something in yeah. the ground. So I know we spend quite a long time making sure that our permanent courses are up to date, so we know where everything is. Yeah, and if you muck it up and decide to go home, then no one notices. Exactly, you pretend it never even, happened. As long as you don't put it on fetch, <laughs> nobody will even know you've been. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just one other quick thing because the hard, the hardest thing when you start orienteering as well, there's the jargon which hopefully I've explained. But if there's something you don't understand, please post on the fetch orienteers thread on fetch, and one of us, there's a few of us who do some orienteering, we will explain what the jargon is because that is as with any sport, it's it can be tricky um but um and we'll also i'll offer a lot i've got the tips and things like how to set a map and all those sorts of things which feel free to ask us what that means and things and things like that but um if you're doing an event it does help to know what the symbols on the map mean yeah so i will <laughs> that, that's because they're a bit like um so some people will be familiar with Harvey's maps. So they're a little bit different to OS maps. Um, Harvey's maps are closer to orienteering maps. Um, so people who've done mountain marathons will be familiar with that type of thing. But orienteering maps are specially drawn. They've got special specifications. Fortunately, there's a website that's brilliant. It's called Map Run. I'll, put, I'll get, make sure you get that link. Uh, and it goes through all the different symbols that are used on all the maps. Uh, and again, if there's something that you don't understand or you don't know what it means, post on the thread and we'll answer. Um, because the other thing that I, I didn't say before is when you go to a control point, you get a description because of where it is. So it'll tell you if it's in a depression, it'll tell you which depression it's in, etc., and how to find that. But there are some, because this is done all over the world, to so standardise it, they use symbols rather than words. Yeah. Um, especially at bigger events. Um, and we're not, some clubs aren't always great at catering for new newcomers, so they don't have a list of what these things mean. And you look at it and go, I've got three squiggles, that, an arrow to the left. Oh, oh what does that mean? Um, but again, on Matt Run, he has a list of what all these things mean and how you read them. Uh, and there's, I think there's even a quiz you can take. So if you want to take this a bit more seriously, you can, it's a good way of learning what all these things mean. So that's a really good link. Um, that's done by a guy called Simon Erringdon, who uh, I think he's in Happy Hearts Orienteering Club. So just to say thank you to him as well. So Excellent. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Uh, anything else you want to cover? I know, you, I know how keen you are to, to get everybody orienteering. So, uh, um, is there anything else or no, we I just get this it, uploaded? It's really good fun. I, that's, that's the reason I keep it. <laughs> at times it's incredibly frustrating and I have had 
come back in all sorts of foul moods uh, <laughs> when it's gone horribly wrong. Um, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I want to make sure I've got everything right. Um, and that you just have to remember there's no such thing as a perfect run where you get everything right. And even the top boys in the world, top boys and girls, um, they make they get things wrong. Um, yeah. the, all, all the time. I mean, I've got a fr few friends who are in the GB squad and they say they make mistakes left, right and centre. Um, so, yeah. So, um, just go and give it a go and remember everybody starts not knowing anything <laughs> about it. Excellent. And it takes, it, I was once told it takes five years to learn how to orienteer and then five years to get good. So obviously right. next next year I'll be amazing. So because I've been doing it for nine years, so the tenth year, uh, but it doesn't quite. Uh, it's, it, it's yeah, it it does take a while to get to if that's to get really good at it. Um, on most people, it's just it's something different. That's the way I'd yeah. say. Doing well, it. I'm excited to uh, to go and see what I can find near me now. So. Um, mm -hmm. I'll I'll look forward to those links, um, and I'm glad you finished your breakfast. That's all right. Just finish my cup of tea while I'm <laughs> so it's still on your tea. Okay. All right. Well, um, we'll we'll wrap it up there. I'll get this uploaded, and hopefully, we'll be sending some orienteers your way, including me. So, uh, thanks very much for for joining me today. No, you're welcome.